Yo, what's happening, y'all? Yo, man, Valentine, baby. Coming from on the grind. You know what we got to do. Man, you know the sun's out. But you know what? I think something happened to the sun this morning, man. I think it was a little overcast. It wasn't blue skies like normal. But now I think the sun is coming out, though. And so I have to give it to y'all, man. It had to go down like this here, outside. Say no, man. Outside, man. It's the home edition, baby. I have to give it to y'all. So, yeah, we, hey, look here. We already know the pandemic is still raging. People, get it together. You know what I mean? Stay safe. Stop using the mask as a political issue. I'm going to move on and pass that, man. So, yeah. Um, you heard, I mean, there's certain sports right now. Baseball, they're thick right now. Florida Marlins, man. 13 people on their squad tested positive. You know, I truly believe maybe baseball could have been in the bubble too. I would say in L.A. because there's five different places that they could have played. Maybe staying in that type of a bubble might have worked for the MLB. But right now we don't know. I mean, NBA is getting ready to get started. NHL doing their thing. Soccer had they they little bubble too, but lots of teams opted out. NFL, yo. Y'all going to have to get it together, man, because you see what baseball is going through right now. So the NFL might have to beware because they're going to be traveling from state to state, city to city, you know? And this is what happens, man. So you just don't know. And the NFL can't be in a bubble. where they, they There's no place you can be in a bubble. So that's going to be tough on them. So maybe I don't want to say it. You know, you might have to look into saying, hey, look, this may be a season that we have to forego. But still try to do what you got to do to make it happen. Now. So we know that. I'm going to put it out there to y'all. I know, I, I, I believe y'all know when the emancipation happened in Canada. And the 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 abolishment of slavery, and we know that all took place August first, eighteen thirty four, and that's when all the British colonies and decided to abolish slavery, and even in um, the Caribbean. Jamaica, you know, me being a Jamaican, also Canadian, you know, we had to, this is when all these things happen. And the, there's going to be an emancipation walk, I think this weekend, August 1st, in Van City. So, every one of y'all should get out there and, and go do your thing to make sure you support the, um, the emancipation of the abolishment of slavery in Canada. Because remember Canada, you can't hide from your past because there's over 40,000, 30 to 40,000 people who came here after uh, with the Underground Railroad by uh, Harriet Tubman. So Canada, you can't hide from your past. So the emancipation should be a, a national holiday and I think there's only one country that has it and I think it's Trinidad and Tobago is the only one to adopt the emancipation the abolishment of slavery 1834 to be a national holiday so what makes Trinidad and Tobago think that that should be a holiday because it was an important day and truly I think Rob Fleming needs to get something like that in school because again this dude doesn't seem like he wants to put anything of any heritage, black history or indigenous heritage in school because none of it has happened yet. So I'm thinking this might be something that you want to put in schools. 
You feel what I'm saying? And then there's a, a study being done by, um, her name is Charmaine Nelson. She's a um, art history professor. And her and about her and her students wrote a 91 page document about report on slavery. So y'all wanna look that one up. And this is all about the um, James McGill, who's, I know there's a university, University of McGill, right? And hey, I'm not saying anything about the university because the university is probably great. But they wrote the article about this man, how he was, but let's do this. They say he was an entrepreneur, a businessman, a philanthropist, but they never mentioned that he was a slave trader. You see what I'm saying? So James McGill was a slave trader. And we've got to put it, because this is Canadian history, right? and Canadian black history. This is what we need to have. And you need to know about your past. And they're writing this 91 page document or art or an article, but yeah, about this man and how he was the trans a transatlantic slave trader. Because, hey, this man transported slaves across the ocean and they talk about this, the transatlantic, the transatlantic slave um, agreement with certain certain countries, right? And so they're breaking it down to certain things. And I believe this is something that you guys want to maybe look into. So something that will help, you know, the emancipation and understanding why 1834 is so important. You see what I'm saying? So this is something y'all gotta look at and it's worth putting into black history studies, indigenous studies, you know, because this man was a slave trader, not just a, this philanthropist, how are they trying to make it all soft and sweet? So we need to learn about the past and learn about these people, about how they were back then. So don't just think that, yeah, you know, you go to McGill, you need to, hey, we might need to study every name of these universities to see what, who was named after, you know what I mean? Because I know that uh, Douglas College is named after Frederick Douglass. So, there's something you want to look into as well. You feel what I'm saying? So anyway, hey, check out, check that one out. You know, her name is Charlene, Charmaine Nelson. Then, yeah, you know, we had, we had a lot of passings this weekend, but I mean, this is, you know, we had um, C.T. Vivian, right? and John Lewis. And now we had a, um, this is a gentleman who's, who's a pioneer, legend. You know what I mean? This was the first black anchor to grace TV, worldwide news, CBS worldwide news or something like that, right? And this man, George Elroy Boyd was the first black anchor, Canadian black anchor. And I'm going to put it out there to see I don't know what's I don't know what's happening in the other provinces. But I can tell you I'm thinking in BC Do we have any black anchors? No. Because the only person I can see 
on TV, that is a black anchor right now, is Don Lemon. That's the only dude I see. So, where is the diversity? You know what I mean? This man was a writer, a songwriter, a playwright, radio, radio playwright, radio songwriter. You know what I mean? And this dude basically, you know, he, he carved his own path. And so I don't know why there isn't more known about this man. Because he's done movies, written songs, he's written plays that's been turned into dramas, I mean, written things that's turned into, into movies, you know? So, I mean... I don't know. I mean, I look I look at myself and I go, I mean, I want to be the next George L. Ward Boyd where I can be an anchor or the TV show host. And the key is getting the opportunity. I mean, the diversity has to come from the hiring practices of, of these companies. And like I said, I haven't seen... I don't see any black anchors on TV. I mean, if I look at uh, wow, maybe sports. You see a few. You mean you? You don't really. You see some of them maybe leading the on the hosting the um, play by play in NFL. Hmm. Man, that's a tough question. That's an interesting question of why there isn't any more. And this has been a long time since uh, George Boyd has been has been on TV. It was in the early 80s or late 80s or something. So since then till now, and we only look at Don Lemon, and that's it. I mean, you have, you had Oprah, but I'm talking about like the anchor, you know what I mean? So there was Tavis Smiley. Wow. You see, you see what I'm saying about diversity, right? This is, <laughs> this is how it is right now. And how are we going to get through this point of our lives saying, yeah, you know what, I want to see somebody on TV that looks like me. And how come I can only see Don Lemon? Amazing. So, the institutionalized racism and the oppression and the systemic racism and all the other things that go on is still there because hiring practices have not changed. It hasn't changed in the NFL with only one, you look at all the teams and all the modern sports today, there's only one black owner. And I think that's Michael Jordan. And then you look at, there's another, there's a guy who owns, I think the Jacksonville, um, um, Amir Khan or some, Amir Khan, I think that's his name. As far as that, I mean, how many black head coaches? You see what I'm saying? This is, it's, it's few and far between. And people, we need to change. Diversity needs to happen. 
Hiring practices need to happen. It needs to happen right across the board. And I'm even talking about even in the park board, man. Because you look at all the park board commissioners and whoever they are, I don't I don't remember any seeing any black people on the on the the park board uh staff in, in city council. Hey, parliament in all these things, this thing it has to change. So I'm letting y'all know this is what has to happen, man. And we need more diversity. We need more racial equality. So I don't know. I just have to. I have to tip my cap to my man uh, George Elroy Boyd for being for doing what he did and paving the path for someone like myself, even Don Lemon and everybody else and whoever else is out there that want to do this. You know what I mean? So, to my man, George Elwood Boyd. And I'm also, I think I should probably give you a little moment of silence. Rest in peace, my brother. Yo, for all you cats who are out there, you know that we're still going through a pandemic, man. And the pandemic is getting, it's killing 150 whatever, it's almost at 150,000 people in the US. So, and people are dying here in Canada too, BC as well. So we need to start doing the things that we need to do to stay safe. Wear a mask is the most important right now to stay away from people if you can't social distance. Wash your hands and don't do what they were talking about where they said people who wear a mask don't wash their hands or people who wash their hands don't wear a mask. No, you need to wear a mask and wash your hands. Why do you think uh, 1918 Spanish flu? Because people didn't wash their hands. So we need to take care of that. You understand what I'm saying? Wear a mask, wash your hands, sanitize, social distance. Do what you got to do to stay safe. You feel me? Yo, I'm your man Valentine, baby. If you think it's your time to shine, you need to get on the ground with your man Valentine. George L. Roy Boyd, rest in peace, my brother.